Uh, this is going to capture an incident on the 257 fire that occurred on the Tongue National Forest uh, June 11th. It involves an individual that went down with symptoms that looked like dehydration. And um, we medevaced him into a trauma one center. And at that time uh, that he got in, it uh, was it looked like they was developing uh, rhabdomyosis. Um, so at that point, uh, he was admitted into the hospital. And uh, what this segment here is to try and capture some lessons learned, some little bit more information about this, as we're seeing in the fire community a little bit more uh, occurrences of this, or at least a recon uh, we're recognizing this a little bit more, uh, but we really don't understand exactly what causes it as far as what we can really pinpoint if you do A, B, C, you're going to develop this. So I think this is very important to, to, uh, to get this on tape so that we can learn as much as we can for this to try and prevent future incidences from, from occurring. My name is Fred Brewster. I'm the superintendent of the last Hot Shots. I've uh, been a soup for four years captain on Plumas for six before that and a crew member for, I don't know, this is my 20th hot shot season, so been around a long time. Got to the 257 fire late because I had truck difficulties. Uh, got ahead of the crew, was up doing scouting like normal, listening to some traffic on inner crew, and uh, my one of my squaddies, Michael Winch, called me and said, hey Fred, if this progresses any worse, we're going to need a helicopter. So I went, uh, okay, well, what is this? So he says, well, Kyle's locked up. He can't walk. We're trying to make it back to the buggies. And I'll give you some vitals in like five or ten minutes. I called Division. Sean Walters was a Division Zulu trainee and said, hey, Sean, just launched the ship wherever it's coming from. At least get it on the way. He said, okay. He didn't ask me what it was for. He just said, okay, ship's coming your way. Uh, and I said, we'll get you some vitals as soon as I can. And by that time, Alan Schultz, my other foreman, had already turned the crew around and they were hiking back down the road because Kyle wasn't making it back to the two track. We are gonna have to cut a LP, LZ spot for the helicopter right where he was. So, they turned around, headed back down the road. I was up on top of the hill, so I turned around and started walking back down the road. And uh, Jack Marvin, Division Foxtrot, he came in with his uh, UTV, pick me, V, pick me. We made it out there, and uh, in the meantime, Winch had called me again and said, yeah, I definitely have the ship, but I'd already launched it, and it was on its way. We got out there, Kyle was on his back, they were, had uh, ice packs on all of his major muscle groups under his arms, because we were going thinking heat stress with the cramps. So they were massaging his legs, and it was obvious <laughs> he wasn't going anywhere. He was in a lot of pain. So the crew had already made the LZ. Uh, the native airship came in, and we loaded him up, and he flew into uh, Scottsdale Osborne Hospital. And I followed behind, I don't know, it was probably an hour and a half behind Kyle. And when we got to the hospital, he was on his fourth or fifth bag of fluids. And then it came that out that it wasn't heat stress really related at all. It was straight on rhabdomyolysis, which is where the muscles uh, start to degrade. They set out a, a really bad toxin and your kidneys start to shut down. And that's where all the problems, where all the problems. Kyle, do you want to share, you know, how this all came down for you, you know, and building up to what you started to feel and, sure. and then how it went? Yeah. Uh, so basically, you know, we got a, showed up, uh, we worked a little bit the first night we showed up, uh, just trying to, you know, a little bit of hotline, trying to keep things in check, you know, not a big deal, typical stuff. Went to bed, got up the next morning, uh, you know, kind of got a briefing. 
trying to figure out what we were going to do with the fire, whether we we're going to try to pick it up direct, whether we we're going to, you know, build a big box, all that sort of stuff. So basically, uh, you know, I took off hiking from the road, caught the black's edge, um, just following the black, you know, trying to decide whether we could pick it up direct or, or what, what tactics we we're going to need for the day. Um, you know, took off hiking, uh, you know, probably hiked pretty good for a couple hours, you know, up and down, just following the black, making sure that, you know, we could pick it up direct. So, you know, kind of decided we could go direct, got the guys started to head in there. They came in from another way. Um, and by the time I got over there, uh, tied in with the guys, they were already there. They were getting engaged. Um, you know, leapfrogging with a couple other crews. Tied in with them, you know, everything was fine. I was feeling okay. Um, walked up to kind of a lookout spot. Um, took off walking, felt a little cramp in my leg. You know, I was, figured it was pretty normal. You know, I'd been hiking for a couple hours. Um, you know, I've worked most of my hotshot career really in the desert, so you know, I know how to stay on top of things. I was drinking water the whole time. I've taken some, you know, electrolyte stuff, drank a, you know, drank a Gatorade. Um, you know, I was feeling okay. Just felt like I had a little bit of, just a little cramp in my leg, not a big deal. Um, kind of walked up to the lookout spot and kind of got a cramp in my arm a little bit. It was like, well, you know, maybe I better, you know, sit down for a minute, just try to get some more fluids in me. Sat down, drank a couple more quarts of water, um, had some more electrolyte replacement stuff. Um, never, you know, never felt dehydrated. Um, you know, like I said, I've spent a long time as a hotshot in the desert, and you know, I know that feeling of dehydration. You know, just kind of that not feeling good. You know, your head starts to hurt a little bit. I never had any of that at all. Um, felt fine, completely coherent. Um, Sat down, you know, started drinking some more water, just trying to get back on top of it a little bit. Still sweating, you know. Um, so I sat down. When I sat down, my other leg started kind of cramping a little bit. And I was like, man, you know, I must just, must be down on electrolytes or something. So um, I called the, called the EMT. Um, he came up. I said, hey, you know, you got some salt tablets or some more electrolyte stuff. And. He said, yeah, I took those, you know, just kind of kept sitting there. I started feeling a little bit better, cramping kind of went away. So, the, and the guys that tied in that piece of line were going to take a, you know, a bump on another crew. Got up to start hiking around and uh, hiked kind of down a little ridge, tied in with the rest of the guys. And, and it, you know, my legs started really cramping up from, you know, from my hamstrings to my quads to my calves. And, uh, you know, so I was still kind of just, you know, no big deal. I'll just walk it out, you know, typical stuff. <coughs> Started hiking along, um, and, it, you know, everything started really kind of cramping up. That's when my arms really started cramping. Um, you know, my chest, my legs, pretty much every muscle started cramping. And I kind of told the EMT, and, and uh, he was like, well, why don't we, uh, shoot down to the buggies instead of, you know, going up and tying in with the rest of the crew. And I was like, yeah, that sounds good. I just, you know, something's not going real well. Um, so we kept hiking, trying to make it to the buggies. Um, and we kind of got up on top of a little ridge there and, and that's when it really kind of took hold. And, uh, you know, I started cramping really good. Uh, at this at this moment pretty much every muscle was starting to cramp my hands were cramping uh even my neck my jaw was cramping up you know my stomach my legs pretty much every major muscle group that you have was was cramping and uh, i kind of looked at him and said i ain't making it to the buggies and uh that's kind of when the call you know he called fred and everything kind of transpired from there um, i sat down and uh you know they, the boys rushed in with all the medical gear and got got me take got got me take. But Did they start a line on you at that point, Kyle? Uh, no, they didn't start one until when the helicopter showed up. The flight paramedics started uh, two IVs yeah. in in my arms, and uh, you know, 
and it kind of went from there. Um, I sucked those down pretty quick. I got to the hospital. They put a couple more in me, and uh, you know that's when they did the blood test. And the doctor kind of said, you know, you've got some some kidney issues going on here, and and basically what's going on is your muscles are deteriorating, and they're, they're releasing all these toxins into your kidneys, and your kidneys can't process it. It's a it's an interesting thing, you know, and it's not. They don't know what causes it. They don't know, you know, how to prevent it. Um, but you know, for me, it's just one of those things to take notice of, you know, uh, the, the the major cramping. You know, and you're going to get cramps, and that's just part of this job. Is you know, you get a little bit dehydrated, and and you know, I think there's a difference from getting a you know a little leg cramp that you know to then you progress to the state where I was. So, you know, I don't want to make a big deal out of, you know, people getting, uh, you know, cramps and, and stuff like that, because it happens, but you just need to make sure if that, you know, if that starts progressing, then, you know, you definitely need to pay attention to it, you know, right away. But, uh, so when you got to the hospital then, how did things play out there? You got there on Monday afternoon. I got there and, um, you know, I went, Went to the, you know, they wheeled me straight into the emergency room. Um, you know, they, nurses came in, you know, asking me all the questions. Doctor came in. Um, they drew blood immediately and uh, they took the blood and, and basically, you know, it was kind of weird because they knew right away. They drew the blood, they looked at my kidney level and, uh, you know, they said right away, you know, you've got rhabdomyolysis and it's your muscles are, are deteriorating. And, uh, you know, basically he said, well, what we're going to do is, is we're just going to pump you full of fluids, try to wash your kidneys out, just try to keep you, you know, hydrated and, and fluid moving through your body. Um, and there's, you know, there's different levels as far as, you know, your, your kidney function level and, and some other levels like that that were extremely elevated for me that, you know, obviously they're supposed to be at a certain point, but mine were, were way up. And, uh, you know, he said if we can't, you know, can't get everything flushed out and your numbers don't start to drop, well then, you know, possibility of even looking at dialysis, um, which will shock you a little bit when you're sitting there, you know, thinking about what's going on. So, uh, but, you know, from there, they just kept pumping me full of fluids. You know, I had two IVs going the whole time. Um, doctor said, you know, we'll just keep pumping these fluids from you. We'll check your blood every, you know, periodically and uh, kind of go from there. So, you know, I was in the emergency room for, I don't know, a couple hours probably, and uh, then they just wheeled me into a regular room and just kept pumping the fluids. They came in, they checked my blood, you know, two, three times a day just to see how the things were, were progressing. And, and finally, I guess they, you know, they pumped enough fluids through me and, and that where those numbers were starting to drop and decrease. And they, uh, you know, basically yesterday morning, uh, they took my blood again and said, well, your numbers are getting back more to normal. You know, you're definitely on the downhill slide of, of being where you need to be and not having that elevated, you know, kidney, kidney function level. And uh, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's kind of how it went. That's kind of how it went. And I'd actually heard of, of rhabdo before. I'd done a little reading on it just... You know, you see stuff on the internet or, or whatever, and you do a little bit of, you know, catches your attention, so you do some reading on it. But. So from the first cramp to when you got to the hospital, do you know what that time frame is? Oh, you know, it was probably about the same time frame, uh, probably, you know, four hours, four and a half hours. Because as soon as I started walking and, you know, we split off and said we're going to try to make it to the buggies, you know, that's when it really, you know, took hold. And from that point till I was at the hospital was very fast. I mean, that went extremely smooth. And, uh, probably 30 minutes. Thir yeah, it was yeah, probably 30 minutes from when I felt that to, you know, the ship had been called and I was on my way. So if there wasn't a medevac unit, 
there available and you had to walk out how much longer time or you would have had it been carried at that point yeah i think there was a, to a certain point where i would have i would have had to probably been carried out yeah because i got you know when i was pushing it and that's just how i am i just you know i was trying to make it to the trucks and i could see the trucks you know but it's still you're just up and down you know and it you're just, you know, starting to lock up and, and, uh, yeah, it would, I would have, if we hadn't had the ship, I would have been carried, I had to been carried out. And, you know, from that time to the buggies to carrying me out, we were probably, you know, still decent 10 minute walk, 15 minute walk from the buggies. That's just at a good pace, you know, and multiply that by having somebody on a stretcher up and down over those little hills, you know, to the trucks getting to the trucks, having to go down the road to the ambulance. And that right there is probably would have been an, over an hour. You know, just to carry me to the trucks probably would have been 30 or 40 minutes. So, you know, mm -hmm. having those, having the ship is, I mean, you know, you gotta have, you gotta, we, we, you know, we've gotta have that sort of stuff available to us. It can make all the difference in the world, so. But, but there definitely was a division between the cramping that you've always experienced in this next level of cramping. This was a whole different level. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a good point, you know, to make that clear is, is you know, I've had plenty of, you know, cramps before, um, you know, heat cramps or whatever you want to call them where you're down on your electrolytes and stuff. And, you know, kind of felt like that at first, but then, you know, once my hands started kind of cramping up, I'd never had that before. And I think for me, that was kind of the big, you know, even, you know, running saw, stuff like that, you know, you'll get the forearms and you'll get some of that cramping, but this was where, you know, your, your fingers and everything are just coming in and you can't straighten them out. You know, it's just, you know, sucking into your wrist and you just, I had to take my other hand and pull my fingers out, you know, to, to an extent that I haven't had before. So... Yeah, it, it goes to a whole new level. It kind of starts as a, you know, you get a little cramp, and you're thinking you're okay, and and then, you know, the arms and the, like I said, even at one point, my jaw and my, you know, the neck, you know, muscles were cramping. And so, yeah, definitely a, a whole nother level than, than just your basic, you know, my quads cramping up a little bit, or my forearms, I've been sawing all day, and I'm a little dehydrated, my forearms are cramping a little, so. Yeah, I think there's a, there's definitely a line there where you can say, well, you know, okay, this guy's just got a little heat cramp and everything might be all right to where somebody's, you know, locked up. But there's a fine line, I think, too, you know, it's one of the two, you know, it's one of the Did they give you an indication how, because your kidneys are starting to shut down? Yeah, well, I don't, to an extent, yeah, they were, the numbers were pretty elevated and he was... The doctor was pretty concerned, you know, when they, when they drew blood, looked at the numbers, and, and he came up and said, well, you've got some, some serious kidney issues going on here. So, yeah, they were, he was definitely concerned about that. So that probably happened within that four, five hours segment to how quickly the kidneys would start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I guess, you know, that once those, and he said once those toxins start getting released into your body, um, you know, the kidneys are going to start having problems. As soon as that, those muscles start breaking down, you know, it's going to, the kidneys can't filter it, they can't deal with it. So as soon as that happens, they're going to start, start shutting down. You went to a level one trauma center instead of a local hospital that may not have been able to recognize. I did. Yeah, that Scottsdale Osborne Hospital. Yeah, it's a level one trauma center there. I mean, I got in there and they drew the blood and I mean, he went right to that right away, which I thought was pretty interesting. Um, well, the kidney doctor said come football season, they get half a dozen cases a week in there of that stuff. Mm -hmm. From what, high school athletes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, high school athletes, track athletes, stuff College, like that. You know, he goes, oh yeah, we get them in here all the time. So they know what to look for as soon as you show up there. They go up, oh, take his blood, Pop it through the machine. Yep, that's what he's got. Flushing with fluids, but yeah. they still don't know what causes it. So they're seeing cases of it. 
you know, they're seeing, you know, college athletes, high school athletes, they're seeing these cases coming in and they still don't know why. They still don't know how. You know, they're saying it's dehydration that leads to, you know, the, the cramping of the muscles, which breaks down the muscles, but then he says, I don't, you know, who knows? The, we don't know. You know, yeah. realistically, they don't really know. So, but, you know, it's a good thing. I mean, they are seeing cases. They knew what to look for. And I think, you know, the level one trauma center, yeah, definitely, definitely helps. But it's also something to, you know, keep in people's minds that if that's not available to you, you know, and you've got this going on, then you know, it might be something to mention, you know, if you're in a, a smaller town or something like that and, you know, you can't get to a, a bigger hospital that, you know, if that's what you're having and that's the symptoms, you know, it might be not such a bad thing to mention that to the hospital, you know, from the EMT or, or whatever when you get there, you know, just to, hey, you might want to check in for this or whatever, whatever. Yeah. So oh. what fire was this? How many fires have you been on this year? A uh, couple little ones. On uh, forest. On forest, so, you know, a day or two on those. So this was really- Number two. No, our second, our second out of region role number two fire really and as far as level of, of exertion uh compare this fire to the last couple of fires that you had was it, was it a little bit more strenuous mm -hmm. yeah a little bit for sure um but i mean i was just hiking you know that's that you know i wasn't digging line i wasn't running saw i was just scouting line you know i was just seeing if we could go direct just walking the black's edge really you know, decent pace, not, you know, and uh, the other two fires I worked a lot harder, you know, I was actually digging line, I was actually, you know, doing other stuff than just scouting line, so, and we, you know, had some, some time off between, you know, those other fires, so it's not, you know, it wasn't fire to fire to fire to fire, you know, a continue, you know, a continue.